Big boy Big neighborhood. Boy. All righty now. We got St. John in yeah, the neighborhood. Man. You good in your headphones? Oh, I'm good in my headphones. That's All right. wild. Hey, Amen. Yeah, <laughs> St. John came in and he was like, Big, did you gamble? You rolled dice? Yeah. Man, he over here breaking his homie. <laughs> he wants to you know break what I'm too. saying? Yeah, and he wanted he wanted to come in and do, oh do you gosh. know how insane my dice game is, St. Ooh. John? I don't believe. Let me see. Do, 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 what, let, let's do this. Yeah. yeah. Let's roll for a feature. Ooh. What I'm so I'm rolling for so you rolling for my feature yep. and I'm rolling for what I get. You don't want me to do you don't want to do no project with me. I wanna do it. Yeah, you cool. I cool. How about this? Roll for a feature versus Every morning for 30 days, you run my record. You know what? I can't do that. I'll be fired. I'm going, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'll be the last dice you roll stuff. And then by this time next month, I'll, I'll be working with you. Talk Listen. about, talking about uh, St. John, uh, this way, please. <laughs> this way, please. So, but, but do you roll well? I think so. Yeah. And you just, what did you just get from your peoples right now? I just want a Cartier ring. Right? I never had one of those. And you're not going like, to really give that back? No, nah, I need that. I love that. that. It don't even look like it really wow. fits you. Like I love that. Even if it didn't fit me, you won't right. the I'll wind put it fit. somewhere. Yeah, and the wind the fit. The wind feel great. Yeah, hey, hey, man. You know, I just celebrated a birthday, too. Not that I want the ring, but I'll take yeah. it. You know what? No. There it is. <laughs> hey, man. You know Happy what I love birthday. about that, St. John? <laughs> Happy birthday, though. Is that I can tell you already worked on your nose. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, That's a good note, Doc. Yeah, because usually people think, like, ah, oh, man, damn, it's big. Is it a peer pressure thing? You thought about it, though. And you nah, kicked it around. Like, You're like, nah. Nah. Yeah. I like it. And you know what it was? It wasn't a rash decision, though. Like, nah. you thought about it. You let it soak in. I processed it. Yeah. And that you know, was important. And, and that's why I could take it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? See? Because it, it, it really came from the heart and mind. From when you heart. said no, you meant that. You felt that, right? Yeah, man. See? I'm going to feel Sincerity. that you need to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. That was St. John for coming to the neighborhood, man. Hey. We had so much that we wanted to it cover. Great. But it's my favorite interview ever. He had such a horrible <laughs> attitude yeah, that's good, Doc. that get we had to here. cut it short. You know what I'm saying? It feel like that Jordan Wood. Uh, lie detector test. Oh, yeah. wow. It's like, bring, bring, it's over. St. John, first off, this is our introduction, man. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for coming into the yeah, neighborhood. Bro, thank, thank you for, for sitting down. No, thank you for showing up. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Thank you for showing up, bro. And, and it's crazy when we talk about celebrating, we talk about new music, and then there's some people that really know what's going down, and then there's something that'd be an introduction. Or they're like, oh, yeah, that's St. John. But it's been a process. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when we think about a process, bro, like, there's been times with with years gone by that you put the work you've been putting the work in. Yeah. And at one point when you start to think first of all, when did you first fall in love with with music? Not making music. Had it always been oh, in your household? Man. My brother was a rapper, so when mm -hmm. whatever he would have done, I'd have done, I'd have followed him down a, you know, a rough pair of stairs. It didn't even matter. Thank God he chose something that I could probably figure, you know, finally finesse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Took a minute, but it, you know. Is he in the business time. now? Nah, he's not. Oh, he's okay. standing by on the bleachers and he's clapping. I heard that, That's man. I, I love that he's standing by and clapping. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because when I made it, my brother's my, my, like, eh, man, F him. So when when do you become like a music lover? When you know, like, you know what, man? It's not just listening. It's not looking at my brother. It's about me becoming an artist now. You know what? I feel like I've been on the path from the time I Always. said I wanted to make music. Mm -hmm. But it clicks. You could be on a path, but it don't like. It sets in at some point. Right. Like, I think it set in the last three or four years. Really? Yeah. I mean, not the process, not the work, but when the timing lines up for you mm. and everything that you thought you understood, you finally can practice. Right. What? It's like practicing a free throw, but on a football field. Mm. It's like, all right, cool. I think my free throw good, but I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Mm. Wow. When you finally get on a basketball court and you hit your first shot, you go, oh, the environment wasn't right for me. Mm. Now, when you, when you start to do music and some people notice and then at one point you feel like because i was people where you started to write for rihanna yeah at some I, point but i didn't land any records yeah for rihanna. but Let's... do you do you think like man there's a project i'm on the plane i'm going mm -hmm. in your <laughs> head do you think yeah i'm on yeah automatically right you're the first time anybody in the music business anybody respectable or reputable hits you you think you gone that's yeah. it you lit you spend now the where money. were you at that time like where was, were you living? Were you in? I was in New York. Right? Okay. So I'm living in New York. I get a call, come to LA, right? I think I was living, I was living with my homegirl. I'm pretty sure I was living with my homegirl. I was homeless. I was living with her. Damn. And she was, she let me live with her, fam. I don't think I've even ever said this out loud. She just let me live with her. She was like, I believe in you. I believe in the same dream you believe in. Do what you need to do. That's beautiful. Damn. So I, you get on the plane, I get on LA the plane, bound. Come to LA. I meet the first guy I've been meeting in the music industry for real. The first 
you know, legitimate person, Zach Katz, mm -hmm. right? So at the time, Zach Katz, it's hard to even, he was managing a producer named J.R. Rodham, uh -huh. right? This oh, is like yeah. a lot of yeah, music yeah, business yeah. talk, right? So yeah, you know yeah. what I'm talking about. Hell yeah. And they would they had a company called Beluga Heights, mm -hmm. With, uh, I think Jason Derulo was signed to them. Yeah, man, 100%. Sean Kingston yes. was signed to them. Yes. Uh, those are the people I remember, right? This was, he was at Beluga. He was like, yo, you want to make a million dollars or you want to rap? Because I was just rapping at yeah. the time. I, I'd written my first song for somebody, a friend of mine, and he'd heard it. And he asked me a question I couldn't forget. You want to make a million dollars or you want to rap? And I'd rap for so long. I'd made music for so long. Right. I never did it for chasing money. But I was like, fam, I saw the end of this one. Hmm. Let me just try this road I never ran down before. I want to make a million dollars. I raised my hand. The price is right. Yeah, hell hand. yeah. He said, write these records. We're pitching them to Rihanna. All I heard was Rihanna. Right. All yeah. I heard, that's hell all you want to hear. I don't know what pitching mean. All I heard is <laughs> Rihanna. And I'm, yeah, lit. Like, I'm lit. It's happening. There's no way. I'm in a room. He said, Rihanna's happening. It's done. I'm hell lit. yeah. So I write the records. They don't go through. Of course they don't go through, right? It's not like some Cinderella story with a black kid. That's not how it works. Mm. Right. Right. So I write the records. They don't go through because they weren't good enough at the time. Mm. But I got the opportunity. To meet her? If somebody was close enough, that was close enough, that was close enough. That yeah, was yeah. enough. So wow. the opportunity yeah. was That there. was yeah. enough, bro. But what does that do to you, St. John, when you when you feel like you're so close? And you already, because now you can look back in the rearview mirror, you can say, I wasn't ready. Nah, but in that windshield, when you're looking through the windshield, you were ready. I was you, ready. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. what does that feel like to you when you don't land the Rihanna projects, does that put fuel to keep on going or does that, do you kind of drop your shoulders a little bit? I mean, I'm in a room. I'm just not on the stage. Right. So I'm I hear good. You. If you in a room, you in a room. It doesn't matter where you're standing in the room. It's people who aren't in the room. I got invited. Yep. They said a name. I remembered. I know when the bell rings and I hear my name, I know what it means. Mm -hmm. I heard it. I didn't land the opportunity, but I was still in the room. I had a fighting chance. That means if I wrote a record for somebody that sounded good enough for somebody, at some point right. somebody would hear it. That's good enough. Because mm -hmm. remember, right? I'm in a That's dark a hell of a corner. way to look at it, hell bro. Yeah. That's the truth, though. Because I'm coming from I'm in a dark corner of the world, right, where nothing's happening and, you know, it's just hopeless. I'm, you know, Brooklyn, New York. It's just yeah. nothing but hustlers and, mm -hmm. you know, what they Do you come back? Because you were here for about two months. Yeah, two months. And do you have to pack it back up and go back? Or yeah, do you go back to your friend's house? I went back. What did I go back to? See, he don't even remember. Now he He's got like, this. Dang. This is wow, painful. He's like, crazy. man, he's like, I don't remember where I went. Yet. I don't remember where I went back to. You know what? I went back and then I got my own place. It was like the first time I ever got my own apartment. Damn. So when the, yeah. when the Rihanna project come out and you're not on there, do you be like, man, fuck this project? Nah. <laughs> okay, no, just checking. No, 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 no. It was good. It was just checking to see if that's what you said. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Because that's what I would have done. I'm sure I said that before once or twice about somebody at some point. I ain't say about that one. I ain't crazy. Did you ever get a yeah. chance to meet Rihanna? Yeah, yeah. For what sure. was that like? At, at, at the sure. right time, huh? <laughs> what yeah. was that like? We met a couple times. The first time we met, we was in we were in this mansion, right? So I got the call, right? I go to LA. I try to write the record. It doesn't go. Just so you get the go, you get the whole timeline mm -hmm. of the story. I go back to New York. I go write. I keep writing because now I know this is possible. Mm -hmm. So I write a song for a kid and then that goes off. Like six months later, that record goes off and my name starts to go up. And I go... Oh, I think I understand how this works. Two years later, I get the call again. This time, come to the mansion, write the record. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. See, if I right. swore it off. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. I'd have never got the call. And yeah, I well, knew I thank God ready. I wasn't around you then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I would have messed off the whole empire. Yeah, you might have. You might have yeah, blew it up. Like, man, no, nah, man, F this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but it seemed like you were, you were in a good you were in a good headspace even then, though. Yeah, I mean, man, I focused. Yeah. Right? This is I decided this a long time ago. And whatever I decided, I'm going to stick to. Mm -hmm. Look at it. Every time you get like, you get an inch further, eventually you're going to bridge the distance. Yeah. I do an inch a year. I don't care. I'm going to be here for a long time. I heard that. It don't bro. matter. As long as it happens, it don't matter when it happens. It's going to be on my time. I love that, St. So, John. So I got the call. You're in the mansion. Come to the mansion. $60 million mansion. I've never seen one of these in person. I've only yeah. seen them up on TV. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Yo, they had hedges. You know what a hedge is, bro? Hell no. All right. Big ass bushes. Like Big budget, bushes. Yeah. Yeah. Fancy bushes. You can have your bushes be fancy, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Think about that. Fancy bushes. Your bushes fancy could bush. be fancy. You can cut a little rabbit in there if you yeah. want. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. It's your hair. You know what it means? Yeah. You know? So I'm in there, and everybody's, everybody who's somebody who's a writer that you, you respect is there. Oh. So I know the dream is over there. I, um, Travis Scott was in the basement. Uh, Hit Boy was somewhere in the corner. Uh, I'm like, I'm in the room. 
mm-hmm. but I'm closer to the stage. Right, right, right. Keep going, do your work. So I went to work. I went off again. This time I was more prepared. I knew I was ready. I knew I had it. And is it this a Rihanna project or another Rihanna project? Damn. Did Rihanna got a go. problem with you? No, 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 no. All right. I was about to go. Nah, really all right. This is just how many opportunities you might get if you're not prepared right. necessarily or the timing don't line up, right? Mm-hmm. And this is like like two years ago or something like that. This went anti. They were working on anti. Damn. So it didn't go. They didn't take a record. I wasn't I wasn't offended. I wasn't bothered. I was out there for a month. I was staying in a hotel here. Somewhere in like uh what? West, one of those, uh, Culver City, somewhere mm-hmm. like that, right? This is before I even had my bandwidth. You know, my bearings about LA. I didn't really know enough. I'd come for a week or two. I'm here for a month, staying in a hotel, and all I'm doing is 5 o'clock in the morning, I get up, I get an Uber, I go make the run, I come back at night. Damn. It's the same thing, and it didn't go. It ain't, they ain't take a record. How and many records okay at that. That, that second go-around do you think you wrote? I probably wrote maybe six or eight. Damn. What'd she say yeah. to you when you met her? I said, what's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I mean, it's Rihanna. How much would you guys say? Yeah. You, Sit down and tell me about yeah, your life, bud. Yeah, yeah, you're like, yeah. 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 Funny, because when we, when we met, finally, I was in the kitchen. It was late uh-huh. night. <laughs> it's got a while. I'm in the kitchen. I'm walking out. And this is the time I decide to say, yo, Rihanna, why you don't tell people you Guyanese? Oh, man. I don't know why I did that. Because she's half Guyanese. But you got her Guyanese. attention. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I got her attention. What'd she say? That's not the best way to do it. But... Right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nah, she went off a little bit. Like she started it, a speech, Damn. a direct speech, which just me. There was a couple people in the kitchen, but that speech was for me. I was like, oh, oh, yo, y'all have a great night. I'm gonna get out of here. <laughs> y'all take care of yourselves. Like, is that my Uber <laughs> up there? <laughs> right. Oh man, phone signals crazy. Yeah, yeah. I got up out of there so fast because I get it. You know, you built this entire Damn. thing. You don't throw no rock over here. Damn. I was just asking why she didn't tell people she was half Guyanese, but she does. Right. Yeah. I, I must have missed it, though. Hey, so. man, you got a lot of tuition into the school of experience, yeah, bro. bro. You know what I'm saying? So when do you feel like, oh, man, it's 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 cracking now? Now. Damn. Today, this moment, right now. Hey, man, and, and this crazy, man, like, I always tell people, you know, outliers, your 10,000 hours, mm-hmm. tuition into the school of experience, everything. And it's crazy because it seems like you're so ready for – the opportunity because you worked hard for it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and I'm going to tell you, man, St. John, we don't get a lot of people that come from the finishing school now. Yeah. And whatever it is, if people, whatever, however you get in, that's how you get in. Right. But there, there, like, there's a texture that, that you paid to get to where, to where you're going. And that's why when you say longevity, you already know, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, come on, man, I ain't, I ain't, I ain't tripping off of how long I'm going to be here. Yeah, I ain't thinking about it. Because when you look at it, you got to think about who your heroes are. I know who my heroes are. Thank I you, I watch bro. them. It ain't Thank happen you. overnight. I it ain't happen that. quick. Thank you so much, you know? man. And I wasn't looking now. for that compliment, but thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, and that's not now why I brought you now. here. You know what I'm saying? But but I do thank you all the time, that's all awesome, the same, bro. bro. And I'm humbled. I'm humbled by, by by you saying that, man. Thank you. And I'm pretty sure there's <laughs> others as well. That yeah, there's a couple. Of, maybe one other person. Yeah, right. but, but you know what? Let's not get to the name because yeah, I don't want right. to salt up what we have right now. You're right. Y'all stick you around y'all radios, man. Yeah, you, and we had that, right? Yeah. yeah. Ghetto Lenny's love song. Yeah, man. <laughs> what does that mean? I mean, it's, it's, it's not hidden. It's not like romantic fantasy. It's, it's just like Ghetto Lenny's love song. <laughs> so, you know, they call me Ghetto Lenny. Okay. I, they started overseas. So I was mm. in Europe and they would call me Ghetto Lenny. And Ghetto I was like, Lenny. Oh. Can I ask you? Oh, <laughs> because I even told her when we were talking about it, I was like, well, Lenny Kravitz on the album. <laughs> I wonder if it's like Lenny Kravitz <laughs> with like an edge to it. <laughs> even though Lenny Kravitz still cut from that cloth, probably cut your yes. throat too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but but is that kind of where, where it's from? <laughs> Ghetto Lenny. <laughs> Kind of right, so it started like that for people. So people who were noticing me, they were finding me. The way they identified me, they were like, "Oh, I think I get it. You from Brooklyn? Like you a hood nigga? You ghetto Lenny? All right." I was like, "I like that. That's right. cute. That's cute." <laughs> Took it around with. It. Yeah, I heard Let's do it. Let's that. apply that. Right. So I applied it. So when I was making this project for me, this I wanted to. I wanted it to feel like if me and a stripper got married. Right. Mm-hmm. So this is my idea. Me and a stripper. Of like love ballad, ghetto Lenny's love songs. So that's what you're hearing. That's what this collection is How do you know that Damn. these songs are for you and not for someone else? I decided. I heard that. Yeah. That was kind of a stupid-ass question. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, that was, you could have really uh, messed me up on nah, that nah, answer. No, no, no. Look, I care. One of my heroes. <laughs> <laughs> but, but is it different when you know that you're writing for yourself as opposed to someone else? No, nah, it's not. Mm. I'm not that talented. I'm, let's be clear, right? 
I'm not talented enough to write your story. I wasn't there. I don't know when you scraped your knee when you was four. Mm -hmm. All I got is the one I experienced, the mm -hmm. one that relates to the world in a way that I know how to. So I'm going to give you a piece of what I identify with. And if it relates to you and your right. story, you sing it. You take the message further. Grab it. Right? Right. Like, I don't got to be a, I don't have to have grown up being a woman to write Brown Skin Girl. Right. It's a beautiful record. I don't have to do that. I'm a black man in a world where I grew up with a black mother and black sisters and black girl. Mm -hmm. I know this story. Mm -hmm. So I'm good enough to go, My if my experience relates to yours, and we could tell a message together. But I can't write yours. How did brown skin girls come together with you and Beyonce? It like, that, that's in, an anthem yeah, thank in you. my house, bro. So beautiful. Anthem in my house. Like, how did that come together? It started in Jamaica. So one of my good friends and my publisher, well, my publisher at the time, her name is Shani Gonzalez. She's such a hard worker. She was like, yo, come to Jamaica. We do this camp every year, this luxurious camp. I can't even lie to you. It's luxurious, bro. Right. I heard they that. They give you coconut water. They give you weed. They <laughs> give you Escovish. They bring you Snapper. They bring you Black Car. They bring you Damn. lobster and crab. Listen, poverty ain't so bad when it's on that side. Right. I when it look you. like that. Mm. Right. So we do it every year. We go to this. Uh, You're going to have to give me that ring, man. Nah, nah, keep you keep coming off. It's not the ring. It's the dice. It's the dice. It's the dice. It's the chrome dice. It's the dice to keep oh, falling. Okay. Put them out of your hand. Right. There you go. So in Jamaica, working on these records, it's the last day, and, and Shanine's like, um, 10 days. We're working on it for 10 days. We got this house, these houses on the water. There's about six houses, about 50 of us, right? I got to paint the picture so you can understand Damn. what this looks like. You ever seen a house on the water with the end of the dock, end of the deck, the water starts? Yeah. So the ocean, like you could just walk out from your living room 10 feet and jump into the ocean. Mm. Oh, wow. You don't, you never touch. So sand. you're there, St. John for the it's a Beyonce project. Nah, it you wasn't. Know? Oh, we just there to write records. They inviting the most whoever the most talented artists or writers around the world come write records. Of yeah. course, it ain't free. Of course, it sound good, right? right. The truth yeah. is, it publishes. They're in the business of maximizing mm. and monetizing songs. You get right. the best people in their craft to write songs. You got a batch of records, you could pitch it and sell it. It's hustling. It makes sense. You got the best people mixing the work. You bring them some somewhere luxurious and say, yo, mix up the work here. Right. <laughs> yeah, it makes up the work with a view. Here with some fish. And then you yeah. go, all right, cool. I'm gonna mix up the work. I was gonna do it anyway. Right. Now they have a batch. So this whatever batch of music I'm So you don't at, know where the song is going. I don't know where it's going, but because I'm the type of artist and writer that I am, nobody gets anything unless I raise my hand and say it's cool. Mm. So I write Brown Skin Girls. So we write the Brown Skin Girls. Me. Adeo and P2J, the producer, right? It's six o'clock in the morning, eight o'clock in the morning, I gotta get on a flight. Like that's when we, we finish at eight o'clock in the morning. Wow. The sun's coming up, my flight's at 11, my flight's at Kingston, we're two hours away. Mm. The first thing I do is send it to my mom. The song? What the did first she song, say? She said, you sound good. I was like, that's, I think that means a hit, cause I, yeah. <laughs> that's good enough. I'm a, that's a Guyanese mom, it sounds good? Bro, that could go in a lot <laughs> right? of different ways. Yeah. <laughs> that's a hit, right? <laughs> Second thing I do, I get to the airport and I send it to Tata, right? Because I have a good relationship mm -hmm. with Tata. Just send it to him, like, yo, bro, he's just somebody that cares about my music in general. We don't gotta do no business, it don't gotta be nothing. Just mm -hmm. get up and get dinner and just just real niggas in this business are scarce. Mm. So the few of them that I know, I hold them closely and I think they do the same. Wow. So I was like, yo, Ty, you here's this record. He hit me back like 10 minutes. He was like, this shit is fire. I'm like, thank you, bro. That's that's it. I don't ain't nothing else to it. Cause it's been like that over the years. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You and you know, not this? to get my hopes up, kind of thing, or not. And not that you walking with your head down, but it's right. like ah, I've been here. Yeah, but plus, because I've been here, I know where to go with my content. Mm -hmm. I know where to go with my expectations. Mm -hmm. When I want to move a product, I go to the people that move product. When I just want to tell my friends what's going on, I tell them. Some of them move product. If they want to move it, they move it. Mm -hmm. But our friendship is paramount. Mm -hmm. What's important, the most, the principle that means the friendship, the relationship, the relationship you can't buy back. Get yeah. back, you can't rewind, you can't revise. So you protect the relationship, right? Your friends are your friends. Mm -hmm. Everything else, if it mixes, then you get lucky, but your friends are your friends. So I sent it to him, and he was like, it's great. And Biggs is my manager, right? So when I, so Biggs hears the record, he's going crazy. He's like, it's a great song. So Biggs goes and he plays it for Jay. Damn. Right? Then Shani, who's my publisher, and Steve, who's working in Beyonce's camp, they play it for they play for the same team. There's so many different angles. So yeah. many different Connection people to have everybody. to be involved, right? For a song that's great and beautiful and people around the world are raising their hands saying, I really, this means something to us. So many people have to say, yeah, we believe internally. Standing next, the people standing around in a circle, 
around the pulpit, mm. they have to raise their hand too. Mm-hmm. So Steve's working on the P2J's doing the entire Brown uh, Beyonce project who produced the record. Two lots of stars had to line up. Hell yeah. For that to go. And they lined up. It's so a beautiful when you ask record. Me, Thank you so much. But when you go to Jamaica and you're writing to put it into the publisher's like basket, it didn't go into that basket though. Nah, it didn't. My records don't. Damn. Yeah. That was a so blessing. you sat there, smoked the weed, <laughs> drunk the coconut <laughs> juice, ate the lobster, ate the lobster, <laughs> and then you went to the airport and said, "Hey, check this out." Yeah. <laughs> and, and it Look worked. What I got. And it worked. Damn. And it worked because of I never did nothing thirsty. I never did nothing desperate. The people that know me within this business, outside this business, on a personal level, I'm just a genuine person. Look, I'm who I am. If I say I'm this guy, I'm this guy because I got to wake up and look at myself in the mirror. Mm-hmm. So I had the benefit of when I, the currency of the relationships I built over so much time, when I say, yo, that's what I'm trying to do. The people around me go, let's do that. What was it like when you knew that you got the head nod, like this is a Beyonce song? The morning it came out, when I saw my name on it. Damn. I was like, because you don't know, you don't know until you, you know what I'm saying. It's like Beyonce, it's the queen. What you gonna do? You gonna ask questions? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah, you yeah, took yeah. the record, bro. You in there? You good? <laughs> Everything else is a bonus, and it's one of the most like listened to, like go to records on the so project. Powerful. Though. Yeah. Like, so powerful, so powerful. It means so, and then with a little blue ivy on there, yeah. As well, it, it man, it's such a powerful record, mm-hmm. bro. You know what I'm saying? And and you don't even say anthem. It's uplifting. Yeah. yeah. You know it what is. I'm saying? And, and it's crazy because you created it. You know what I'm saying? So if you That's created that, what else? You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. like man, I, I created that. Like, that wasn't all I do. Right. You know what I'm saying? So even album-wise or when you, when you rewind, what's tomorrow's looking like? It's exciting, fam. <laughs> you have no idea. Like, I'm real. Listen, quiet is kept because I think it's important. When you're working on something that's something supposed to impact the world, or if it matters, you don't gotta overstate it. You mm-hmm. don't gotta oversell it. I don't gotta sell you on water, you're gonna get thirsty. Right? Hey, dude, can you write that down? I'm gonna write it down. You haven't said that in another interview. Have you? Nah, I never said write that, that down for me. And then I'm gonna send it to my lawyer. <laughs> yeah, I need yeah. that. Thank you so much, bro. That's, real, that's not real like low. one of your songs or nothing, right? Because I don't want I don't want it to go to the source. All right. Cause I'm gonna cut this part out the interview. <laughs> <laughs> this will never yeah, show yeah. the light of never hear. What is it what is it like having someone like Biggs in your corner, first of all? Because I thought that like, he was done with the music industry and then he wasn't yeah. gonna rep anybody anymore. And here you are having someone like that, an iconic legend like that. What is that relationship like and how did that even come about? I got a little bit lucky. I I mean it has to be that, mm-hmm. right? Because he was done. He was done. Literally, he, he said was he was done. done. <laughs> like two weeks before we had met, he was like, he was on radio saying, I'm done. Mm-hmm. I'm never doing this again. Mm-hmm. He actually said the only person he would work with was me. I didn't know him at the time. We'd never Damn. met. We hadn't met. That simple. And it wasn't a ploy for us to meet. He was out the business. We met randomly at a PMR show. We met at the most black event you possibly could meet at. <laughs> We in Brooklyn, Brownsville. <laughs> we had a Pimar show, right? He's super black, and I love that. And everything he does represents the culture. And we're in Brooklyn, it's raining, and I'm wearing snakeskin red leather. I remember this because it's sexy sick. Hello. It's so sexy. Say that then. <laughs> sexy, say that right? then. <laughs> and I walk up to him just to say what's up because I knew Ty and I knew the people from Rock Nation. I was like, yo, Biggs, what's up? I don't know you. We never met. Just saying hi. I'm friends of, you know, I'm friends of your friends. When you got friends of friends, you introduce yourself on any you level. Know who they are. So he was like, St. John, I'm a fan. I was like, what? Mm. I was like, okay. Okay. Cool. That's cool too. (laughs) He's like, let's take a picture. We took a picture and then we just built a relationship. Biggs is like the big brother I never got to have growing up. Mm. Some of our our experiences are so similar because I got to grow up watching them on TV and I didn't know. Mm -hmm. I was watching a lot of his principles and ethics and his work habits and he wasn't the one I was looking at. Wow. 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 Yeah, bro. So when I when we met. And he's like, yo, why are you like this? I'm like, like what? <laughs> he's like, why you think like that? Where you from? Where'd you grow up? He asked so many questions for me. And I was like, like this, like this, over here in this corner, Pine and Linden, Brooklyn, East New York. I'm just saying, Guyana, Georgetown. Nah, I'm not a, like, I ain't go to, I ain't graduate from college and nothing. I ain't get it from that. I had to muscle it out. Mm-hmm. And when we started investigating our stories, he's, you know, he's from, uh, he's from the Bahamas. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And no, St. Thomas, I'm tripping. He'd probably, 
He's like, what? Nobody told like, my story wrong. Yeah. This from St. Thomas. He's like, man, he wasn't even listening. <laughs> <laughs> we ain't even that cool anymore. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm from Guyana. He's uh-huh. Harlem, Brooklyn. It's his story. He, this story happened before. He's seen this before. So when he met me, he was like, bro, that's it's wild. You're like a family member I ain't know. So it was natural. It's the most organic, organic relationship yep. I've ever had in my whole life. Wow. He was like, I'm done, but I'm not done. He had all this advice for me. I was like, bro, don't give me no advice. You do it. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, don't give me no advice. Do. Yeah, uh-huh. I was like, no, 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 you do it. He took like two weeks. He was like, all right, I'm doing it. I was like, all right, we lit. Damn. That was it. And the only, look. It's crazy how things align yeah. and yeah. how the sun, moon, and stars, bro. Mm-hmm. Just like that. And the only expectation I had was having another real nigga next to me who was willing to fight as hard as I, I that was it. I didn't expect nothing else. It wasn't like I was looking for this roller decks of information or this this guy with this network, I was just like, I know the cloth he's cut from. How do you not get away from your so-called dream or what you're hustling to? You know, because sometimes people see an opportunity and they think like, damn, it hasn't happened yet. They put, we put an expiration date on success. I haven't gotten there yet. And being close, how did you turn that into a man? No, I was in the room. I was there, As opposed to like, man, I'm done. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. it's, sometimes it's easier to just so-called pack it up. Because I failed so many times before. Mm-hmm. Failure will teach you the lesson. Failure will tell you the road not to go down. Fail- if you're learning from your failures, right. you should be improving. There's no way you could be at the same place you was at 10 years ago if you've been learning from your failure. Even if you failed every day, then you right. ain't learned nothing in a decade. Mm. Uh. That don't make no sense. Not growing. So I knew I wasn't making the same mistakes. Right. I've broken a loop. There's like this perpetual loop. There's this loop where we end up making the same mm-hmm. mistakes forever and ever mm-hmm. and ever. You'll notice you'll probably do some of the same ignorant things you did when you was 12. Yeah. Because you ain't never learned a lesson. So you got to learn the lesson so you can move to the next stage. It's mm-hmm. like playing a video game. So I knew as long as I was moving to the next stage, it didn't matter. The movie would end the way I wanted it to anyway. Had you always been so-called solo? Yeah. Okay. Why? It's just been that way. That's... I didn't have any other options. And then it's also, you know, you 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 so-called fall asleep and dream your own dream by yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes it's hard to have a group or it's hard to have an and because sometimes your your and don't move the same way. You know what I'm saying? It's, like somebody get work. married, somebody got married, somebody don't want to show up, somebody, you know what I'm saying? Like, Absolutely. damn, I attach myself to this person. You know, you know you're going to get up. It don't work. That don't make sense. You got to be willing to do all the work, right? Look, groups are, groups are impossible. You're trying to get multiple people from multiple places, walks of life, different ideologies, different systems of thinking. Like your computer different from whoever's standing next to right. you. Yep. You got to believe the same thing with the same initiative, the same motivation, and not have the same challenges? Nah. That don't make sense. You, got, you have unrealistic expectations of people. Have you ever recorded with your brother? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When, I, when we just, just started, okay. we tried being a group for like eight, nine months. It was, that's my brother. Yeah, so yeah. we were a group anyway. It didn't yeah. matter, right? Right, right, right. I went to the studio with him. You know, I hope he listened. That nigga was lazy. Right. Yeah, see, see, <laughs> see that what I'm saying? Was lazy. I hope he's listening. Yeah, yeah, I hope he catches this. I was late. He was lazy. He, ain't, he was because I would always back. go hustle. I would always go hustle and network and go run the records and figure it out. I think he was more talented than me. Mm. But I worked harder than him. St. John, what did you do yeah. before it kicked in? You know, the was where, your last job. It, yeah. My last job, I was probably, uh, I was working, I was managing hotels. Okay. I hustle. I, listen, I finessed them and let me manage hotel. I can nice. say it now because I ain't never going back. This is it. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> right? I just your hand now. Yeah. Like, what did you do? I was, I walked into, my, so my homie worked at a hotel. He was a bellman. Mm-hmm. He said, yo, they got a job for the manager. I was like, oh, that's cool. I ran a record label. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. This. Like, you know what I mean? Same like, thing. I'm, uh, yeah. I'm a whole enterprise, yeah. man. I was like, I think, okay. At some point, I tried to put out, I put out some records. I put some money behind it a little bit. I put some marketing initiative. I had my friend working with me. That's an employee. Yeah, 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 Damn, yeah. Damn, I'm justifying it in my head. I'm like, I ran a business. Yeah. It failed, but I ran it. Right. <laughs> ran it to the ground. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so but I, so I use that. So when I went on the interview... First of all, nobody came at them like that. I came at them with a purple cow. I'm like, I ran a record company and I failed. Mm. And I'm mm. not going to fail again. You want me to manage your processes? I could do that. Mm. 
Had you ever managed a hotel before? I don't know, bro. <laughs> Hell nah. Hey, man, even, nah. when, even when you look back at that now, St. John, is That's it different dope. now? That Do you know, like, even that hustle, like, man, no, I know how to book my hotel. I know how to, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. everything. Yeah. Learned a lot. Yeah. Yo, I, you know, nah, I'm not going to say that. No, say I'm it. I'm not going to say no. Nah, but you're going to mess up my hustle. You yeah, 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 yeah. You're going to mess started. up my thing. No. I was like, how wait. How you going to start to give this game and tell, then not finish? Tell us in the break. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you the break. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ghetto Lenny's Ignorant Forever Tour Hello. has been popping. Forever. Yeah. Sold out. Yeah. And now you're going to continue with the next leg, right? Yeah. Can I ask you, why do you call yourself ignorant? Because I'm super ignorant. I don't see, I do not attach that word with you I know, at cause, all. Because when you think of it, right? Like you interact with me, you go, okay, here's an upstanding looking guy. Here's a guy <laughs> with some common sense. The truth is, I'm the same kid I was when I was nine. Mm. All the dreams I had when I was nine, ten, I'm living them out mm. in the same format. I think it's ignorant to hold on to that. To mm. remember all the things you thought you wanted to be, I'm doing it in the exact same way. Because for me, being ignorant means being free. Mm. Okay. Not being held down by the things that have kept you from being where you wow. want to be. Ignorant forever. Right? And you know, and, and also, man, you know when some people, and, and I don't know if exactly we're on the same page, but you know how sometimes when you don't know, there's a freedom to yeah. it as well. Yeah. There's there a is. There's no safety net. You're there's, not holding yeah. back. Yeah, like, man, oh, damn, I was ignorant to that. I didn't know. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not like ignorant, like, he don't, you know, Acting, yeah. here's this application. You know, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. All done. Right. I mean, yeah. saying, I, you know, I understand. So like, hey, give me a 20. All righty, here go 4-1. <laughs> <laughs> you got change? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess right. so. Yeah. Well, it's that. It's that type of thing. You know, you hear, like, you hear artists be like, y'all just started rapping, like, last week. Yeah. And they got the biggest record in the world. The truth is, the magic in that is they didn't know. And not knowing made them so brave. Because mm -hmm. when yeah. you don't know, you don't have no preconceived notions. Yeah. You have no expectations. Yeah. You're going to do, Whatever. the guy that just started this morning is probably going to go a lot harder than the guy that started five years ago. He ain't make the same mistakes. And the guy this morning doesn't care. Mm -hmm. He just want to win. Hey, bro, that's very true. That's the same way. When I got into radio, I wasn't thinking about radio. Right. If I knew everything that came with it, then I would, every break, every time I would, I would have had these pressures. Like yeah, people that come true. into radio now, even people that work with, they got a different pressure yeah. than what I had. Mm -hmm. I they just said, "Hey, go in there. This is the name of the radio station. Say your name." And I just Be yourself. I, I went in. You came in free. Yeah, man. And and, and that right there, that was my and, and I used to call my radio show my ignorant radio show. Really? Nah, I wish I did. Oh, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, man. Man. I was like, what? I was like, no way. <laughs> Oh man, he Big. was like, he, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry." I don't even know what he's saying the truth. Yeah, yeah man, yeah. Up. Up, hey man, he gonna he gonna walk out of here like, dude, I'm never going back. <laughs> like, like, did we do the interview? <laughs> what do you love most about touring? Taking off your shirt or what are the experiences performing? Yeah, the shirt part. <laughs> the shirtless not, all around. I mean, I, look, I do a lot of ratchet things before and after my shows. <laughs> what are some of those things? You don't want to know. Mm. I do. I'm asking. You really do? Yeah. Tell you us. ever had a triple double? Like I don't a burger? play ball, so if I got a triple double, it's a whole other thing. What's a triple double? You know what a triple double is? No, like a know, burger. Man, but... All right, cool. So a triple double is when you, when you do two extras and then three extras. So you're in a room and it's two. Okay. And then you're in a room and then it's three. Okay. Oh, you're you talking understand? about like orgy? Oh, you said it. That's nice. <laughs> I like that word too. <laughs> A triple double. So same day you score on triple hell. double. Damn. I count with it's it. It's a fun day. Gosh. I get Damn. it. And, and I this get is, it. This is before you get on stage? Yeah, before. Before and after. What about your legs? Well, you no, right, no, no, you no. already got energy. <laughs> no, no, no. What no, about look. your legs? That's why all this, this a, shit is slow on air. You, no, gotta, you, <laughs> you gotta make sure. You can't finish before you go on stage. You. That's irresponsible. I'm not irresponsible. I'm just ignorant. It's different. Well, don't talk to my wife because I'm always irresponsible. You know what I'm saying? So triple the double. triple double. The so triple you double. saying that you knocked down three. Two and then three. Two and then, two three. And then three. Yeah. You do a warm up before? Yeah, and then post show. Then the Pre show, post show. Yeah, it's a triple because it's Man. him, makes it three and then double. Damn, yeah, you too, huh? I was wondering if I was going to find anybody else that, that lives like me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's what it's he like, likes to do out there now, I know. Hell, hey, man, I'm going straight up. When I see you at your next show, I ain't shaking your hand. No, no, you might not. That's nah. a bad idea. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Hell no. Yeah. That, so it's obvious you're not in a relationship. No, no, no. I not heard not. that, bro. Yeah. How, how old are you, St. John? How old you think I am? Um, you wise. 26, 27? Yeah, yeah 26. 26, 27. Maybe 25. 25? I like 22? when people guess. I just tell them whatever the internet says. Because yeah. the internet always changes it. Right. So I'll be like, oh, whatever well, the internet says. No, they got says. mine. I like it. <laughs> they, they, they got I my like shit it. on there. No matter how many times. don't be right. I looked at it. 
the other day. It wasn't right. Wait, whatever the internet says. 1986. Whatever August. the internet says. Yeah. Damn. Really? Yeah. 33? Mine's at 86 on the internet. Right. I, I'm pretty sure it's just. Yeah. No, no, that's the no, same. No, but it's all good. Whatever please. the internet says. <laughs> what? I, I yeah. work with her, please. <laughs> Eventually they'll get it right. I heard that. Yeah. So you want to know. Were you born in August 26? Huh? I was born in August 26, yeah. They just don't real. have the year right. Hmm. The world will never know. Hmm. What did you do for your. I could see, though, if. Birthday. It just passed. Twenty. I'll be honest. I don't remember. Mm. Huh. I can imagine. Yeah, I don't you know. You were looking at a triple and, double, yeah. triple. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> on a triple double. And, and, and oh, us sitting here, here with our dumb ass, we had all kind of. Yeah, I was thinking triple burger? double. I was like, I was on the same. I was like, oh, I love In and Out Burgers. <laughs> I know. I think I was in Moscow. I forgot. Like I can't remember. Every oh, day some ignorance happening. Like it's cool. I heard that. Yeah, bro. I was in Moscow. Probably. Well, we got to live so. through you. Yeah, man. You should. Please. I'm a good person to live through. Yeah, yeah. I promise. Yeah, man. Did you design this outfit you're wearing? Oh uh, yeah, so this is from my on um, the collection. So I run a brand called Christian Sex Club. As you should. Wait, yeah. wait yes, called what? Big. It's called Christian Sex Club. Can you okay, please my homeboy Jose Christian is extremely Christian. <laughs> Can you what tell us about What is the Christian it? Sex Club? So it's a brand. Look, so I grew up in a church, right? Uh -huh. My real name is St. John. Yes, sir. All right. So I grew up going through church. I was bent Pentecostal Baptist, Seventh Day Adventist, uh, end up being Brahmin, where I was meditating. Like my mom practice metaphysics she so she wow. put us through all of that thinking that was appropriate for like seven-year-olds right yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. yeah so you know poor people church that's it mm -hmm. so when i got older i was like this don't really make a lot of sense some of it just didn't make sense so i like the conversation christian sex club because i think that's what the world really is i think the things you desire the things that you you pray to and the things that excite you I think we live by those models. Like, that's the mold. Christian Sex the Christian Club. Christian Sex Club. Triple double. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. And, and when you buy the hoodie, it come with a rubber in the pocket. There it might. Go. You know what I'm saying? Say, it might. I heard that. Yeah. Keep that same energy. Safety first. <laughs> yeah. uh, what, would, what advice would you tell your younger self looking back? Mm -hmm. Keep going. You were right. Uh, I swear <laughs> on God, I would tell myself that you were right. Keep going. Were there times um, that you felt like giving up? That you That's why you're telling your younger self that? Well, there were times where I hesitated, mm -hmm. right? Because when you, you believe in something, you by yourself. Believe that. Yeah, hell yeah. It's a solo mission. It's solitary when you believe in something that don't exist. You got to paint the picture in your head, and then you got to paint the picture for people around you. You got to walk them through it and convince them, right? Because I'm not alone. I came in here with a bunch of people. There's a lot more people like the ones that I came in with standing outside or outside somewhere to saying I believe. I would tell myself, keep going. Cause there's moments where I think I'm, you would think you're crazy mm -hmm. by yourself. You believe in something that you can't prove. Uh -huh. Yeah. And it's just you and you don't know how to find the other people that believe in the same things you do. You think you're nuts. Mm. I would tell myself, you got it. Was family always supportive? That. Nah, for sure not. Right. What did mom say? Nah, nah, she ain't want that. No? Uh -huh. Yeah, music, like rap. Nah, she can't. You got to think, my yeah. mother grew up. In the church? Right, she grew up in the church. She grew up in Guyana. I come mm -hmm. from generational poverty, fam. Ain't nobody never have it. None of us ain't never have it, right? Grandmother, 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 keep going back. Right. However far back you want to go, just hope. I'm the first example of hope realized. I'm the first tangible example of hope realizing my whole family. So, no, nah, my mom ain't want me to rap. Mm -hmm. What about now? It's easy now. You can hell see yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, yes. Yeah, she clapping now. <laughs> yes, son. Yeah. yeah, and that's cool, too, though, right? Because it's, yeah. it's my mom. No matter what side she bet, yeah. she right. gave birth to me. So, no matter where she placed the bet, yeah. she gets the win. I heard that's that. That's so yeah. beautiful. Can you see yourself doing something outside of music? If so, like, what would that be? And not porn. But go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Get that out sure. of your list. No. <laughs> uh, I don't know, because it took me my whole life to get here. I'm going to stay here for a minute. I'll mm -hmm. fill you in when I figure the next part out. I heard that, man. I, I enjoyed it. having you yeah, in the neighborhood, Thank bro. Thank you. Bro. Dope. Yeah, you I knew you would. Yeah, yeah. And she told me that you, you enjoy him. having. Yeah, she was like, babe, just talk to him. I really enjoyed having you in the neighborhood, Thank bro. Thank you so much. Bro. And I'm going to tell you, man, make sure that you come back. I would love mm -hmm. to. Yeah, make sure you come back, man. We'll continue to watch you, bro, and continue to send you nothing but good energy, yes. bro. You a good dude, man. Thank you, fam. Now watch you get out of here and get arrested. Right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Don't, 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 don't call out on me. Don't knock, knock on wood. Like, damn, what you had with that? Or you served with his warrant downstairs. Oh, I'm like, man. He couldn't tell us it. But no, all jokes aside, man, I definitely want to see you continue to win. And you're in charge of that, bro. You already know. You know what I'm saying? You already know, man. But thank you for coming into the yeah, neighborhood. Thank you for having me. St. John in the neighborhood. Big boy. Big, Big boy. boy. I caught it. You saw that? No. Hello. <laughs>